Welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another edition of Press Row. Joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Guys, basketball season picking up the pace. Girls draws are already out. Boys draws will be out this Sunday. Which basketball league on the boys' side is the best top to bottom in your opinion? Because I think there's a couple of good choices for this. I I think you got to start with the MAC, don't you? I mean, the WBL's down. I think we've all come to that conclusion. Uh, the BVC has not impressed me. Uh, the Northwest Conference has been better than I thought it would be, but uh, the MAC, I think the top is higher than most, so that'll lift up the bottom a little bit. So I'll go with the MAC. I disagree with you because when you say top to bottom, to me that means you have to look at the disparity between the bottom and the top. Sure. You look at the MAC, and the bottom of the MAC is now nowhere near as good as the top of the MAC. Northwest Conference, one through eight. Is it eight, right? Or is it nine? It's eight now. Okay. <laughs> one through eight in the Northwest Conference, as we've seen all, all season long, anybody can beat anybody. So by that definition, I'll go with the NWC, although I will admit the top of the MAC is the best. They used to be nine, but then they got the boots out and did some kicking with them. <laughs> <laughs> I, guys, I, I'm going to go MAC because of St. Henry, Mary, and local Versailles and the strength of them. But I'm also going to throw in a little monkey wrench and go with the Northwest Central Conference and those top three teams in that league, Perry, Upper Soda Valley, City, Lehman. And, yeah. and a very good Temple Christian at four in that yes. league. You know, and that was just doing that based on just top three. But, uh, you know, Temple's a team you can't count out of any game, and they're going to scrap and fight, and they're going to play blue-collar basketball. But I think you take those two leagues, and you, you look at it, and you'd be like, mm, that's pretty interesting. I thought about going Northwest Conference, but... You know, it seems like at the same time, Northwest Conference, you've got a couple of teams that are just trending downwards right now, hence the reason I didn't go that route. Well, I think it's also, it points to the greater picture that the Western Buckeye League and the track, the two generally, historically, the two best basketball leagues in the area, both are significantly down this year, as Todd mentioned. Yeah, the other thing, you look at, we penciled in Salina, and all of a sudden they almost stumbled against Van Wert. So even, even though we think they've got an easy road, in conference, you always have to make sure you show up each Friday night and take care of your business. And Salina did eventually win that game, but Van Wert nearly pulled off the shocker. Yeah, the rivalry games are always fun. I had the same thought process as you, Mark. I originally thought MAC because you think of the top MAC teams, but then you go to the bottom of some of the leagues, and the bottom of the NWC is Lincoln View and Bluffton. Remember, yeah. Bluffton was yeah. undefeated. We know that Kistler, Levi Kistler is likely out for the season, which hurts them a bit. But Lincoln View is a really talented team as well, and and top to bottom, which was the question, I'd say the NWC, I think that's got to be the strongest. Give props to Lincoln View on a nice comeback uh, after getting beat by 20 on Friday night by LCC. Come back and knock off Delphi St. John's on uh, Saturday night at home as well. Yeah, they had a tough weekend with those two opponents, yep. and going one and one is definitely an accomplishment there. Will any MAC schools, as we trend back towards the MAC, beat St. Henry this season? They have three league games left. They've got Parkway. Fort Recovery, Coldwater. That being said, not going to happen. Well, well, they could meet in the postseason, another yeah. MAC school. They could, run up against, they could run up against Versailles. No, nope, they will not run against Versailles. Versailles, well, it would be at, at the state. state. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. talking state. the immediate <laughs> part. We'll see about states. Uh, well, I, we just veered off into a whole different area. <laughs> I, I, I took that as regular season, guys. Right. <laughs> and, I think the obvious answer happen. is no. I, you know. I mean, cold, cold water is a well, team that is Ryan Mike very Ryan sat out the game right. Saturday, they lost to Salina, came back on Tuesday, played in the win against Minster. They're also were without Mitchell Stommett against Salina. So it looks like those guys are back and healthy, but if that's a lingering injury concern, maybe that opens up the road for an upset sure. in the regular season for St. Henry. And there's always that caveat of are you healthy, but right now I think we all agree St. Henry looks to be the team to beat and the Midwest Athletic Conference and moving forward down the tournament trail as well. It, if, if everybody's there and healthy, they're going to be very hard to handle. I wonder, based on the tournament draw on Sunday, you know, they're in that same district with LCC. Well, and also, who's the one? Well, who keep in mind, what Mary's? happens Friday and Saturday won't have a bearing. Right. But remember, all the information is, to go. is in on Thursday. The balloting concludes Friday afternoon. Right, it does. But one team will be in St. Mary's, one will be in Finley. Yeah. And if LCC were to get the one, and I'm just throwing this out as a hypothetical as we tape this here, you know, Frank Kill has said he, he'll go to St. Mary's. 
which would put Finley there, the two, or rather St. Henry, St. Henry in, in Finley. Finley as the two. And I wonder, will that just light a fire under their back end? And they go up there and just run roughshod through uh, everything in Finley? Or does that cause them to trip up, especially if they have to face a team like Cary or Liberty Benton? Cary is a team at 16-3 and three coming into this week as well. They had a game, last, I think they have a game tonight on Wednesday. Cary is another team that has grown as we've seen the last two years. They've been knocked out by LCC in the districts each of the last two years. And they're playing very solid basketball this year as well. Looking at St. Henry's losses, it was Rushi very on early in the year. Second game of the year. And then this loss to Salina without Mike Sell and Stavins. So they've pretty much done everything that they are supposed to do so far. To the PCL now, will the Putnam County League have an outright champ? We've got a three-way tie at the top right sure now. Sure doesn't look like it. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and it, that's one that I'm still trying to figure out. Are these teams equally good or equally bad? Right. I, I'm not sure. Uh, really, if we can tell the difference yet. Uh, just a strange weekend for Kaleida. They, they lose a low-scoring game to Ottoville. After holding Ottoville to 10 points over the last three quarters, they still lose. Then they take Wayne Trace to overtime. But they, you know, they're tied with Miller City and Ottoville. Uh, Miller City, a nice win over Perry this week, although the Commodores were a little banged up. Um, I don't know. I think, I think Miller City and Kaleida are the two best teams there actually, but it, it looks like they're destined to somebody share that league title. Well, I would say as early as, as long as two weeks ago when I saw Kaleida against Lipsick, ironically for WOSN, mm -hmm. um, I would have said Kaleida runs away with that. that. was the best they had played all season, several people said, and I was like, you know, I'm in agreement. This is probably the team that wins this league, but Miller City, Kaleida, one's going to cancel the other out, and Ottaville, they have Continental on Friday, and then they're at Lipsick next Saturday. That's the remaining Putnam County League game. So I think it's going to be Ottoville and either the winner of Miller City Kaleida on Friday night will split the title. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking as, as well for that. But Kaleida's played really well in league, mm -hmm. so that they would be deserving of at least a share. In the NWCC, we've got a big one this weekend between USV and Perry. Perry's 14-4 and overall and 6-0 and in league, and USV is 14-3 and overall, 6-0 in and league. So it's a league title game. This is the last conference game for the two of them. Who do you like? I'm not saying Jared Polling is the X factor, but USV without polling, Perry with polling is how I picked this one up. And, uh, you know, obviously it was at Saul on uh, Tuesday when Miller City knocked off. Uh, Perry snapped their 14 game win streak as well. You know, whether Jared goes, I mean, or not, I still think this would probably be the best game in the area coming up on Friday night. I, I think that loss to Miller City might have been one of the better things that could have happened to Perry. Kind of refocus your team. Because anytime you get into those lengthy winning streaks, you start thinking maybe you're a little bit better than what you are because things have just been rolling on for you. I think it was a good wake up call. Talking to, to Matt Tabler on Tuesday afternoon, he was concerned. He knew how good Miller City was and knew that his players would be at least a little bit focused on this matchup with the USV. So this might be a good opportunity for the, the Commodores to kind of refocus themselves and, and laser in on USV and really the, the league title. Yeah, I think the other thing that is good is if polling is limited again on Friday against USV, the team has now had a game to adjust to that. He played sparingly in that loss at Miller City, so they got that out of the way in case they need to go without him on Friday. But I think they probably need him if they're if they're going to win this game. But uh, at least they've got one under their belt without him. Well, uh, something else to keep in mind with this matchup: the Rams have got some good size. Yeah, Perry doesn't necessarily have the best. Of right, size, that's the point so. I wanted to make yeah. too. Just guys like Cameron Parker and and even out, and guard wise, Brandon Rossifer and Lane Hurley, they're very quick. And I don't know that Perry's seen players like them yet this year or during that win streak. So I think that could play a factor. Closest, the closest would be I would think would be Layman Catholic. Mm -hmm. You know, from a size perspective that they've seen, but Hurley's a kid, as we saw last weekend, goes for 43 in a win last Friday night. He's a kid that can go off at any time, and uh, this could be a, a special night at, uh, at USV there at Alumni Fieldhouse, one of the underrated facilities, in my opinion, as far as basketball venues in Northwest Ohio. It's not often that you get a true league championship game in the middle of, you know, towards the end of the season like this, so it should be really exciting. Let's go to college now and talk about another MAC the college Mac, Will Toledo, and this is, I'm looking directly at Todd here, and Bowling Green <laughs> get into the NCAA tournament and snap, snap that, that drought. Well, I guarantee you they're both not getting in, I'll tell you that. Uh, well, one of them. It's a one-bid league. Uh, you got to like the chances, but I mean, it, let's face it, it's ludicrous that 
Toledo's not been in the NCAA tournament since 1980. And Bowling Green's not been in since 1968. It's, it's preposterous to even think of that, but it's true. Uh, Toledo's playing very well right now on a six-game winning streak. Uh, the Falcons are tied with them at 8-3 and three, along with Akron. Uh, the chances are there that one of them could represent the league, but, you know, over the last 30, 50 years, it hasn't <laughs> happened. So, you know, I, I would say uh, the history says no, but uh, you look at it, I think both teams have a realistic chance. You, you want to be in the top four when it's all yeah. said and done. The top four get to the semis, at least in the MAC tournament, through buys. So uh, you don't want to be outside the top four. Uh, I should say the top two get to the semis, and then if you're in the third and fourth spot, you only have to win three games to win the tournament. Otherwise, you've got to win five, so that'll be key. Guys, one of the things um, that I looked at looking at these two teams is they both share a common denominator. They both have four of their last seven games on the road. BG has Buffalo mm -hmm. twice. They've got them the last regular season game, and UT still has to go to Central, still has to go to Akron uh, as well a week from tonight. Yeah, uh, no question. But you know, right now they're both at eight and three, mm -hmm. along with Akron. So right. while you've got maybe a few more road games, you've already got a lead on uh, most of the conference at this point. So, uh, and Bowling Green's won three road games in conference already. So uh, they've done well on the road, including handing Central their only home loss of the season. So, uh, really, I think the common denominator uh, is that. They one team does it with offense, one team's done it more with defense. Toledo really can outscore people when they need to. Uh, I don't know that Bowling Green can do that, but they lead the league in most defensive categories, and that's how they've been winning. Well, we'll be watching on Selection Sunday to see, it, or we'll know once they, if they win the league. Well, I think also, we'll know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, they can't get an at-large bid? No. Well, they could. That's, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. I mean, they each have 16 wins right now. It doesn't it's seem out of the happen. question. It's not going to happen. No. Okay. You would but know better think, than me. I think the runner-up will get an NIT. Okay. Well, I mean, nowadays, everybody can get into a postseason yeah. well, tournament. Mean, it's just a matter of whether or not you want to pay your way in. Yeah. There's right. the NCAA tournament. There's the NIT tournament. The CBI or whatever. Yeah, the rest of, of them are pay to play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're pay to play. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, when, when's the last time the MAC got two teams in? It's, it's been 20 years? It's been years? 15 years. I think it was 99 or 2000 yeah. last mm -hmm. time there were two bid league. Okay, so the MAC tournament is going to be pretty important. Come yes. We'll, we'll be watching those two teams in there as we get set for our own version of February and March Madness with high school basketball. Thank you so much for joining us on Press Row. I'll see you next time on WOSN.